Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And in this video, I'm showing you some iPhone settings that you should turn on or change for the best experience overall. Let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump right in. First up is something called Music Crossfade. So you wanna open up settings and then scroll all the way down and then choose music and then turn on Crossfade right here. You can then choose a duration for your crossfade. Now, essentially what this is going to do is it is going to fade in between your songs. When one song ends, it's gonna fade in the next one. So it makes your listening experience a lot nicer in Apple Music. I always recommend having a lower duration for crossfade. So I usually set mine at one second, but you can go all the way up to 12 seconds if you want to. So make sure to turn on crossfade if you want a nicer listening experience inside of Apple Music. Next up, we are staying inside of music settings and we are going to turn on automatic downloads. What this is going to do is every single time you add a song to your library, it is not only going to add to your library, but it's also going to download it onto your device so you can listen when you're offline. So here inside of Apple Music, if I click on add to library like this, you can see it also downloads the song right there. This next one is inside of phone settings. So scroll down, then click on phone then click on Wi-Fi calling. Make sure this is turned on if your carrier supports it. Essentially what Wi-Fi calling allows you to do is it turns every phone call when you're on Wi-Fi to a voice over IP call. This makes the voice quality a lot better, it makes the fidelity a lot better, and it also can reduce some of the lag that you get on normal phone calls over the cell towers. So I definitely recommend turning on Wi-Fi calling if your carrier supports it, as it can make your phone calls a lot better. And next up is a solution to this problem in Safari, where you have a ton of tabs and you just keep opening a new tab every time you wanna do something. Inside of settings, there's actually an option to remove these tabs automatically after a set time frame. So open up Safari and then scroll down and then click on close tabs. You can see by default it's set to manually, but you can choose to automatically close all of your tabs in Safari after one day, one week, or one month. So for most people, I'd recommend setting this to maybe one week. And this way, after seven days passes, all of your tabs in Safari are gonna be closed automatically. And the next one is for the camera. So scroll down and then click on camera right here. Now, for whatever unknown reason, the default record video option is set to 1080p out of the box when you get your iPhone. I would click on this and change it all the way up to 4K60 because if you're able to get the best resolution at the best frame rate, why not just do it? And then on top of this, I'd recommend turning auto FPS to 30 and 60 frames per second. Essentially what this is going to do is automatically lower the frame rate of your video if the lighting is not good. So when you have a higher frame per second in your video settings, it typically doesn't do as well as 30 FPS or 24 FPS in low light. So this kind of gives you the best of both worlds. If you have 4K60 turned on, when you have excellent lighting, you're gonna get that nice smooth frame rate. But when you have auto FPS turned on, if your iPhone detects that you're in a low light setting, it can automatically lower the frame rate of that video to make it look a lot sharper. For this next one, you wanna click on sounds and haptics, then scroll down and click on keyboard feedback. Now you can choose if you wanna have sounds coming from your keyboard, but the one thing I always recommend people turn on is haptic feedback for the keyboard. When you have this turned on and then you start typing on your iPhone, it is like night and day. So if you didn't know about this feature and you didn't have this turned on before, go and turn it on right now and let us know in the comments just how much better it feels typing. The next couple are inside of display and brightness settings. Now this first setting I'd recommend changing is something that often goes overlooked, but it is text size. Now before I used to think that changing your text size or increasing it would be something that is just for old people to do. They can't see their iPhone. However, I'm finding now that increasing your text size just a little bit can make your iPhone so much more enjoyable to use. You can see just how much better your home screen widgets look with a slightly larger font. Now, if I go and change it back to the default, you can see that the widget shrinks like that. And honestly, I think my iPhone looks better with a slightly increased font like this. So I'd recommend changing your text size to make it something that you find enjoyable on your iPhone. And then staying inside of display and brightness settings, if you have an iPhone that has an always on display, such as an iPhone 14 Pro or an iPhone 15 Pro, I would recommend turning off show wallpaper. So when you have your always on display set to default, this is what you see all the time. You can see it's a little bit dark, but your wallpaper is definitely showing. 
And then when you turn this off, it is only going to show your notifications and the time. So this is definitely a really nice way to save some battery on your iPhone and also give it a way cleaner look when it's locked. And next up is inside of battery settings. Now this one is important. So scroll down and then click on battery, then click on charging optimization. You then wanna make sure that this is either set to 80% limit if you have a newer iPhone or optimized battery charging. I'd say for most of you, just choose optimized battery charging. Essentially, what this is going to do is it is going to hold your iPhone's charge at 80% until your iPhone thinks you are getting ready to use it. And then in that last hour or last 45 minutes, it's then gonna to top your iPhone up from 80 to 100%. The reason it does this is because it is quite unhealthy for your battery to sit at 100% for a long time. So for example, me, I get up around 8 a.m. every single day. So if I picked up my iPhone at 3 a.m., it is only going to be at 80%. It is not going to charge the iPhone to 100 until around 7 a.m. So if you want to extend your iPhone's battery health, I definitely recommend turning on optimized battery charging. And next up is for wallet and Apple Pay. So scroll down and then click on wallet and then scroll down a bit more and then click on allow payments on Mac and make sure this is turned on. Essentially what this is going to do is every time you are in Safari on your Mac and you wanna purchase something using Apple Pay, you're able to authenticate that using your iPhone. So you're gonna see a prompt show up on your iPhone when you initiate the transaction on your Mac. And essentially it's just gonna ask you to double click the side button and authenticate with Face ID. And that way you're able to authenticate all of your payments using your iPhone and Face ID instead of typing in your password on your Mac. So this is a really convenient way to buy stuff on your Mac using Apple Pay. And next up is for mail. So have you ever sent that email and then 10 seconds later you look and you're like, oh darn, I sent it to the wrong person or there's a typo in it? Well, luckily there's a setting inside of mail that lets you prevent this. So click on mail, then scroll down, then click on undo send delay. You can choose 10, 20, or 30 seconds. Essentially, all this does is whenever you hit send on an email, it is going to wait the selected amount of time before actually sending that email. This actually saved me a few months ago. I sent an email to the completely wrong person, but luckily I have my delay set to 10 seconds. So I was able to open up my mail and then click on undo send. So this is a really nice feature inside of mail that can definitely save you. This next one is for your iMessage applications. You know when you click on this plus icon and then you scroll, all of these applications are just in the way sometimes. And most of the time you don't need half of these. There's actually a way to remove them. I know a lot of you have probably tried swiping and you can't do that. You can't even press and hold to remove them. You can only reorder them. But luckily there's a way that you can remove these inside of settings. So inside of message settings right here, you wanna click on iMessage apps. And then right here, you can choose to turn off whichever applications you want. This next setting is for the measure application. So I like using the measure application for one thing and one thing only, and it is getting people's height. This is always a really cool feature that I like doing with my friends and family. If you point your iPhone at them when they're standing in front of a blank wall, it can tell you how tall they are. However, the first time I did this, because I'm in Canada, it showed how tall the person was in centimeters. Now, I would argue that the metric system is better in most ways, but when it comes to measuring someone's height, I just have no idea what centimeters means. I want feet and inches. So if you go into settings, then click on measure, change this from metric to imperial. That way you can get the feet and inches when you get someone's height in the measure app. And next up is for the fitness application. So recently Apple added a really cool feature. Whenever you're doing an outdoor cycle or an indoor cycle, you're able to have a live activity going, showing info about that cycle. Now, if you go into settings, scroll down and then click on fitness and then make sure live activities is turned on. This way you're able to get access to that live activity whenever you're doing that workout. And this gives you a really cool view whenever you tap on it, you can see all of the metrics about your bike ride. And next is for the home screen. So you'll see that we have this search toggle at the bottom. Some people like it, some people don't, but if you wanna have the look of your iPhone's home screen a lot more clean, you can actually turn this off. So inside settings, click on home screen and then turn off show on home screen for search. Now you'll see it is completely gone and it only shows the dots when you swipe between pages. And then the final setting I wanna show you in this video is for your widgets. 
So if you like to stack your widgets on top of each other like I do, there is a setting that you should definitely turn on and it is called Smart Rotate. So press and hold on your widget and then click on Edit Stack and then make sure that Smart Rotate is turned on. So when you have this turned on, your iPhone is going to use the intelligence on device to think when you're gonna wanna see those widgets. So for example, I may wanna see the weather widget in the morning, but after the morning, I might not wanna see it. So the system is going to switch to my other widget for me. So I definitely recommend having Smart Rotate turned on to get the right information at the right time. So there we have it. Those are all of the iPhone settings I recommend you either turn on or change. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like and also subscribe if you want more videos like this. With that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.